Glad to see everybody today. Uh, I'm really going to do a semi-abbreviated keynote. We have a very packed schedule, but there's stuff I want to talk about. First of all, this is the weirdest CES I've ever been at, ever. Uh, and the reason is it's a super hot mess. And what I mean by super hot mess is every company that's displaying here is displaying their vision of the future. Spectacularly interesting. But what makes it even more interesting is that it's an engineer's view or a scientist's view of the future. But I don't know if it's a human view of the future. You, so if you hit the floor and you're saying, well, wow, Samsung thinks this and LG thinks that, you're right. Everyone is displaying a slightly different vision of what AI is going to do to all of us. It may look like a hot mess, but I think this is actually the most interesting part because somewhere in there is the future and you guys are going to be the architects of that future. So I hope you'll pay a little bit of attention. Now we're here to talk about AI, except we're not going to talk about AI because honestly, AI is a term that is undefined. You, you make it into whatever you want to make it into. Um, the West Coast is done with AI, in case you're wondering. They're all on AGI. Now, AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence, but it's absolutely not an agreed upon term. Like, no one has an agreed upon definition. OpenAI says it's when um, a tech stack will do economically useful work. I don't know what that means. Apparently, they do. When they make money, apparently, that's AGI. But Everybody else has a different definition. Some people say it's when an AI system will be, or an AI tech stack will have capabilities that a human has. Now, human beings are not generally intelligent, and I'm not trying to be pejorative. It, they just aren't. We are very narrowly uh, intelligent. And so at the end of the day, AGI uh, is a goal of the West Coast. What it means to us is that everybody is going to be working on agentic systems, which I will discuss in a second. Now, Contrary to popular belief, AI was not invented on November 30th, 2022. That's the most important date, though, in our history of communication, literally since the invention of the printing press. I call it the CG boundary. I know a lot of you have heard me say this, the curation generation boundary. Every single thing you found on the public internet prior to November 30th, 2022, there was a 99.9% .9 chance it was created by a human being or with the heavy hand of a human being. Post that date, we are in the generative era. We're now more than two years into it. I defy you to find content that was solely created by a human being. It's called slop. You'll see websites that are completely AI generated. You will see blog posts that are completely AI generated. Um, Amazon now limits you to three eBooks a day. Why? Because people were posting 500 eBooks a day, all made by AI. We are drowning in AI generated nonsense. And I say nonsense, it looks like English. It reads like English, but it's kind of useless. Importantly, we are no longer the sole writers of our own history. Human beings are no longer the sole writers of human history, and we never will be again. Think about that for a minute, and then think about the ramifications, monoculturism, the quintessential Xerox of a Xerox of a Xerox of a Xerox, where all kinds of issues are about to happen because we are no longer the sole writers of our, of our own history. And again, um, Everybody in this room is playing a part. So how much AI are you using and where are you using it? What are you using it for? What do you believe you'll rely on it for? And then, um, you know, what realistically can we expect from AI in the next little bit? Like how convenient is it going to be? In the last two years, we've been doing somewhere between five second to five minute tasks. Right now, in early, uh, late 24, early 25, you can throw a spreadsheet into GPT-40 and say, what can I learn from this? And it will do five hours worth of work in about 90 seconds. So I'm going to predict with absolute certainty that inside of the year 2025, you will be able to give AI, any AI model, a task, and it'll do five months worth of work in 90 seconds. How are you going to lead your teams through that, and what will your teams be doing? That is a question we are going to answer. And so I will say with great certainty that AI is not a technology issue for anybody in this room. It is a leadership issue, flat out. You will need to lead your teams and lead your organizations in a way that you never have before because there's no point in increasing productivity unless you're going to innovate workflow and process at the same intensity and with the same pace. What's going on on the West Coast are reasoning engines, and they just launched O3 last week. Now, <laughs> there was no O2 because that's a copyrighted trademark name of a phone company. But O1 was the first reasoning engine. What a reasoning engine is, is um, it's an AI tech stack that will break up a problem using a technique called chain of thought and will literally reason through the answer. It's slower than a large language model, which you're used to in GPT-40, but it's very, very different in its construction. 
we're getting into an era that's going to be considered agentic, which we're going to talk about in a second. But before I do, the question was, OpenAI raised billions of dollars at a multi-billion dollar valuation, and it takes about somewhere between three and six months and $500 million to train a model. Last week, when they announced O3, DeepSeek V3 became a thing. This was trained on GPT-4 in under two months for under $6 million. Under two months for under $6 million. And when you ask it what it is, it says to you it's GPT-4. It was trained on GPT-4. So is um, the future large language models and hyperscalers spending billions of dollars and raising billions more in order and using ungodly amounts of energy to compute? Or is the future a 14-year-old who got early admission to Dartmouth for mathematics coming up with a way to train a model that's equal to GPT-4 in two months for six million bucks? Nobody knows the answer to that question. No one in this room, no one anywhere on earth. But from a business perspective, that question really matters. And from a humanity perspective, that question is the only question. Because Facebook, Meta, just put in out their first RFP for their own nuclear power plant. That's how much electricity they think they're going to need for the compute. Agentic systems, I promise you. Agentic is like if you drive down the 101, all you see is billboards for multi-agent systems and agentic systems. It's just a fancy word for agency. Google says we're in the agentic era. Google 2.0 Flash is a tremendously good model, and it does stuff for you. We're going to hear about multi-agency, and multi-agency is going to matter greatly to us. Um, the ability for tools to go out there and do our bidding now, Siri can't suck forever. And, and, and inside the iPhone, there is <laughs> running the latest 18-point blank um, operating system. And on an iPhone 16 or, or better, what you, what you have is the, the ability for Siri to do multi-app agentic work. What does that mean? You take a picture and you say, please enhance this picture. Hey, Siri, enhance this picture and text it to my mom. It will open up a couple different programs, do that work for you. Now, what's it el what else is it going to do? Well, it's going to know that I like to travel in rows. I only sit on the aisle in rows two through four. I only buy refundable tickets, and I only fly during the day. Not because I tell it, because it's going to learn that that's what I do. And ultimately, we are going to be marketing to bots. Every single marketer in this room is going to be marketing to bots. We are going to be marketing to the personas that are on those phones. So I'll have a, a value persona that's automatically built for me. I will have a value persona or price persona. Maybe I'll have a private persona. Maybe I'll have a dating persona. Right now, we market to ad IDs. Ad IDs are a quaint past. One ad ID, one human being, or one persona. Now, one phone can have 5, 10, 20 different personas. These avatars are what we're going to market to. It is the end of link-based search. That is just absolutely right. Google has killed themselves. It's AI overviews. GPT has GPT, chat GPT search. Perplexity is out there. Th these are summarizing websites. They don't click on ads. They don't click on bots. They click on nothing. They summarize. They give you attribution. But if you've gotten the answer you want, why are you going to click? We're in a different world, folks. We are marketing to bots. Now, people already know how to do this. Don't get freaked out. When you, when you work on SEO, when you work on SEM, you are figuring out how to make the Google bot love you. We know how to make bots love us. We just have to apply that knowledge in a new way. You want to just use this word from now on. Forget the jargon. There'll be no jargon. We're not going to talk about agentic anything. We're not talking about AI anything. You're going to think about the workflows and processes in your organization, and you're just going to super automate them. What gets super automated? That's what a multi-agent system does, and that's what you're going to want to do. Pick out a workflow and say, if I automated this, I would be making more money. Now, I have 53 seconds left, and I really want to stay on my own time. We make a gigantic mistake. We make a gigantic mistake. In our society, we conflate creativity and execution. Now, this... You might recognize the artist. Somebody scream it out. Obviously. You could stand in front of this for hours. This is art. It demands your attention. It cannot be ignored. This is an oil painting. It is a photorealistic oil painting by an unknown artist. Could not find the person's name. This is execution. This takes years of technique. You will practice thousands of hours, tens of thousands of hours to be able to do this. Which is which? Art cannot be ignored. Human beings are magic. 
We do magical things. We create. But most people don't create for a living. They execute other people's visions. So if your job is to add a column of numbers in Excel, Excel does that faster than you will. It will always do it faster than you. If your job is to write a paragraph, ChatGPT will always write that paragraph faster than you do. Always. And most likely better than you will. Because it didn't, it passed Mr. Riley's ninth grade English class. <laughs> Creativity and execution are separate. If you conflate them, we are screwed. You will s definitely fear losing your job if you sit here and think, well, it's going to do my work for me. It's, I'm more creative than it is. Yes, you are more creative than it is. Every human being in this room is more creative than it is. But you are not a better executor. And the people who use these tools right are going to use them to execute at a level that you can't. So um, I'm way over time. This is a crazy and important word. You know the character AI is one of the fastest growing um, apps in AI. This is where people talk to fake everything. Fake Paris Hilton, fake Elon Musk, fake boyfriends, fake girlfriends. Um, this is an authentic synthetic, Mia Sophia. She doesn't exist. This is the most G-rated picture I could find of Mia. <laughs> 13 to 32 year old boys don't care. What's about to happen is last week VEO, V-E-O, number two was launched by Google. I just want you to watch this video. This is the last thing I'm going to show you and I'm going to get off the stage. These prompts are single line prompts. This output cannot be copyrighted in the United States of America. So I'm not going to attribute the author of these prompts because that person has no rights to what you're about to watch. This is Mario Brothers as a 1940s industrial film. This is Zelda as a community theater production. This is Donkey Kong as a nature documentary. <laughs> this is Pokemon as found footage horror movie. This is Grand Theft Auto as colorized as, the Keystone, uh, as Keystone's Cops. This is my favorite. Space Invaders is a low-budget 1950s Ed Woods film. These are prompts, folks. This is Pong as a 1970s martial arts film. And this is Among Us as a reality TV show. These are single line prompts into a new text to video engine. Social production, whatever you think social media did to media, that's what social production is going to do to production. This is the worst it's ever going to look. It will never be worse than this. Thank you.